Welcome to Gems of Knowledge with your host, David Bellman and Justin Crawl. Each week, our experts will answer all of your jewelry questions with Rachel Putney, our social media maven, who will relay your questions to our experts. And now, here's your host, David Bellman. Hi, I'm David Bellman, and welcome to Gems of Knowledge, where each week, our jewelry insiders will answer your questions about the jewelry industry. In this week's episode, we'll talk about colored gemstones and the difference between synthetic and natural gemstones. We'll also discuss heat-treated colored gemstones as well. As always, we'll answer some of the best viewer questions we've received and present another installment of the hit segment Celebrity Jewelry Smackdown with Rachel Putney, the social media maven. So let's get started. Uh, so I'd like now to introduce uh, my two co-hosts. I want to introduce Rachel, of course. Our, hello. Uh, hello, our media maven. And of course, uh, Justin, who is obviously working on something very important on his texting. Texting. Justin. Justin. Texting. Yeah. Yeah. texting. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, but, you know, that's Busted. what we do around here. We are in business to make money, so that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, well, first we want to introduce a new... I guess a segment kind of, or a new contest, right? Is that what we have today? Yeah, so we are going to do a contest for all of you. Um, it's for a $100 Visa gift card. Ooh. And there's just a few simple rules that all of you, if you have social media, will be able to do. You have to first like us on Facebook, and then on our Facebook there will be a post about our contest. Tag three friends in there. Head on over to our YouTube, subscribe, and then comment, done. Once you do that, you your name will go into our little bucket that we will choose on May 14th, our Mother's Day episode. So make sure that you have that done by May 11th. That's the deadline. And if you watch on May 14th, you will see if you win or not. Very cool. How's that? Yeah. No, I think that's nice that we're going to get you know people engaged in what we're doing. Yes. And that's a great way to do it. And I think that was not... And that was your idea by the way so congratulations thank on you thank up you with an awesome idea for us <laughs> so we have a really excellent question that came in and i thought this would be a great opportunity to kind of throw it in early because it's a big subject for a lot of us yeah absolutely so i had a woman call in mm -hmm. and she said she has a ruby ring and she was looking to sell it do do you guys purchase and i said absolutely a lot of local jewelers purchase not all of them but mm -hmm. definitely bring it to wherever you are and see if they'll buy it from you and she goes perfect does it matter if it's a lab created ruby oh. which is a really really good question absolutely it definitely matters so you know natural rubies or any kind of gemstones were created you know in by mother nature yeah, in, in the nature. earth millions sometimes billions of years a uh, lot of effort digging them up mining them very labor intensive dangerous in some instances uh you know very very rare in some of the higher grades and then you have synthetic man-made bing bang boom done in you know a matter of months or you know uh, it well, just and then they don't have any value on the secondary market well explain what they're doing they're actually creating these crystals using the same compounds right the same yes. natural compounds as a natural ruby but they're growing them in a lab. In a lab. Yeah, so they in a, have... This, yeah, in a building. In a building, absolutely. Yeah. Same chemical composition, yep. same crystal structure, same optical properties. So they have the same hardness, the same durability, same stability, everything. It is a ruby. Ooh. It's just man-made yeah. ruby. It's a big... You know, and then... So th they started making synthetics in the late 1800s. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that. So people will come in with an antique piece, yep. 100 years old, uh, uh, you know, or maybe 90 years old, but 100, you know, a, a very old piece. This is real. This is a. Uh, this cannot be. not be synthetic. Well, not not the case. So if yeah. someone comes in and wants to sell, I mean, you have a ton of experience. You are a gemologist. You taught there. How, How do, you, do tell? you tell if it's synthetic or if it's natural? Or lab created, because synth synthetic is is one, right? Yes. Okay, so let's just I just want to be clear because okay, sure. I want to be technical about this. So we have synthetic, which is like from a hundred years ago, and it they kind of made it out of plastic and glass, and they used a bunch of different materials, right? They didn't use a lab created. That's an imitation. 
Okay. So well, here we go. Okay, All right. So, so let's split it so, up. So if you have red glass that's okay. trying to be a ruby or they're lo- making it, it looks look like, like it. that's an imitation doesn't have all those c- similar properties like chemical composition and all that all right though that's an imitation then you have synthetic ruby okay. which is actual ruby same properties everything just man-made then you have the natural one, which is dug out of the earth, by, oh. formed by Mother Nature. So you got three. So, synth- oh, so synthetic and lab. Cre- I'm using lab created too. That's all. Because ah, that's, that's what synth- a lot of. Okay. Yeah, so synth- synthetic and lab created, we're on the same page. Same thing. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Because a lot of stores are selling them now. I mean, yes, a they lot are. of stores, and people don't realize it. And you really, you know, you almost have to go in there and ask the question because a lot of the salespeople maybe don't even realize that they're selling lab created type stones. I was just going to say. Um, do they have to label it as a synthetic ruby or can they just say this is a ruby and someone purchase it thinking maybe it's natural but they weren't aware of it well there there are federal trade commission laws that speak specifically to that and they have to disclose it there are some things that jewelers don't have to disclose legally about diamonds and uh, grading diamonds we can get into that at some point but with regards to synthetic rubies sapphires emeralds they have to do it now how do they do it well they print something somewhere you know and it says it but that doesn't mean the salesperson has to come out and say they just say ruby you know but they're not obligated necessarily to say synthetic or lab created but i right. will tell you that somewhere on the paperwork when you have to you buy it it will be on there and if it's not that's that's completely illegal so yeah. for all of you an important question to ask when you're purchasing any type of jewelry with gemstones is make sure you ask before you purchase it is this a natural stone or is it lab created exactly yeah and yep. uh going back to how how do you tell right so the number one thing for detection of synthetics is going to be inclusions. So looking at the stone under the microscope, and it's not always easy. It's not. Yep. Uh, there are certain characteristics that might be so small that you can only see under between 10 and 60 power magnification that might distinguish between a natural or a synthetic. Yeah, and typically sapphires and rubies, and let's might as well talk about corundum. Sure. You know, that, that a lot of people don't know that sapphires and rubies are actually the same stone, just different colors. Then they call corundum. Yeah. And typically not a very included stone in general, like emeralds are mostly you know included. Very rare to find a, a real clean emerald. Sure. But um, you know to find a, a ruby or a sapphire with little or no inclusions isn't that unusual. You know, you'll see, like, well, we don't get too technical, but they're fingerprint inclusions mm-hmm. and those little things. But um, but that's a good point. These lab-created stones usually come out almost perfect every time, right? I mean, there's no inclusions, no nothing. They're just, right? That's some of them. I just saw an emerald that was Chatham, a Chatham synthetic emerald loaded with stuff in it. Really? Uh, yeah, On actually, purpose, then? They're kind of putting it in there to make it look like? Well, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good point, too. Um, there are synthetics that are made for the trade. They're going to be disclosed. Disclosure is what we were talking about before. Yeah. Um, and there are synthetics made for deception. Sure. And uh, those are the ones that are a big problem. And to combat this yeah. uh, is GIA, the gold standard. Send the stone. If it's a big purchase, you should be insisting that the colored stone has a report. Uh, an G- independent lab report saying that it's natural. Not an appraisal. Right. A gem lab report that only gives reports. They don't put a number on it. It's just a report. A value. They don't put a value don't on put it. It's very value. important. So when you're out there shopping around, if someone hands you something, it's all laminated, and it looks like it's some kind of official report, you know, you say, oh, well, this must be a certified from a lab or something like that. Well, guess what? If there's a value on it, it's an appraisal. That's instantly, right. And it has no value whatsoever as far as being natural or synthetic. Yeah. Because a lot of these guys, a lot of these big corporations are just producing, mass producing these rings. Yes. And they're, they're producing these the quote-unquote reports. reports, which in fact are really just appraisals. Completely bogus. Yeah. They're not worth the paper they're written on. Yeah. Uh, and going back to um, synthetics again, you know, when they first came out, we were talking a long time ago, you know, the whole market thought, oh, now they're making them, you know, uh, uh, man made ones. The yeah. value of the natural ones are going to go way down. Yeah. And now the, the industry, we're talking about synthetic diamonds. 
Uh, now that they can man make synthetic diamonds, which could be a whole other show, we could talk about that. Mm. Um, the same thing. When, it, when synthetics first came out in colored stones, there was the fear that it was going to ruin the market. Well, just the opposite happened. There's something about a gemstone that took millions of years to grow and is extremely rare and extremely beautiful that will always be in demand over something that was created like that. Yep. I mean, there's a market for everything. There's a market for a real painting by Picasso, and there's a market for people who just take a picture of the painting and reproduce it as a poster, right? That's right. I mean, and it's kind of right. like the same thing. I mean, it looks really close, and it may, from a distance, look like it's the real deal. But then when you get up close and you look at it, you realize it's not, and the difference in price is gigantic. And so here's the thing, going back to this woman who's selling it, right? So what's the resale value? Because when you go to these stores and you buy them at retail, they're still charging a hefty price for these synthetic stones, right? So before you answer that question, I was just going to ask, I know you kind of said on the resale value, there, it's obviously not going to be as much as a natural. Um, worthless. How <laughs> absolutely worthless, in Justin's words. <laughs> when they are originally purchasing it, is there what's the, is there a price difference between the, a natural and the lot created? It's yes, it's yeah. huge. It's yeah, no, no, huge. they'll they'll charge you a nice retail price for them. You won't pay as much, but you'll pay at least fifty to sixty, seventy percent. So are the, a lot of people buying them to save a dollar? Oh, of course. Okay. Well, two reasons to save a dollar, yep. but also because these stores can't afford to stock natural stones anymore. If they start making their rings with real rubies, sapphires, and emeralds again, Cost and then the, goes the, up. the yeah. prices of the jewelry would be so expensive that no one's going to buy it. So right. they had no choice but to go with lab created and kind of play around with it and not really mention it. And, you know, they kind of say, hey, you know, it's like it's exactly the same. It's the same chemical composition, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry until someday you want to go sell it to you. And you look at it and you say, yeah, it's great, but it's lab created and I have no market. So you have to understand, yeah. there's no market for this stuff. And that's why there's no value. I mean, sure, it costs money to make it, right? Yeah. And everything else. But yeah. then we, what are we going to do with it right. when we buy it? You've seen my bag of gemstones. Yeah. This big. Actually, I'll, I'll bring it in uh, to, yeah. to show everyone. It's filled. Yeah. Filled with stones. Now, if I could bring those somewhere, anywhere. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm on 47th Street in New York once a month. Yeah. If there was one place I could bring those stones and get anything for them, a dollar, 50 cents, anything per carat, yeah. I would sell them. They sit there and they pile up. I can't get anything for them. And therefore, I can't give your customer anything for it. Right. Yeah. And, it, and it puts us in a bad position because it looks like we're being disingenuous about it. But it's the truth. It's the, you know? 100%. Yeah. And you can take it. And of course, if you go back to the store where you bought it from, they have a no purchase policy. A lot of them all stores oh, of course. are like that. And They're why brutal. is that? Well, because they don't want to take it back. They don't, <laughs> they don't have any yeah. use for right. it either. That we, you know, we buy back everything. That Including we, our own jewelry. Uh, that's what I was, yeah, specifically saying. We buy back everything that we sell because we sell quality merchandise. Yep. You know, uh, honestly, you're not going to get what you paid for. You never do because it's used now, but you get a very high percentage because it's quality jewelry. And, uh, you know, just buying synthetics, not the way to go at all. Well, and look at gold, you know, just as an example, you know, we use this all the time. Um, you know, people bought gold in the 70s and 80s. You know, when gold was around, what, 50, 100, sometimes $200 an ounce. And then it's been as high as what, 1900? Yeah. And yeah. people were selling their old gold jewelry that they weren't wearing anymore. And they were collecting, you know, collecting dust in their jewelry boxes. And they were receiving more money than yeah. they actually paid for it. Now, again, that was kind of a fluke. And yes. I'm not re recommending that anybody goes out and invests in jewelry, unless, of course, you're buying it from me. And then, of course, it's a great investment. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> or Justin you could be in All right, Dave. Yeah, I know. Anyway, <laughs> no, it's, you know, people have to understand this is a luxury item. Yes. But the difference of this luxury item compared to other luxury items, like maybe a fur coat or some, like a, like a fancy car, that over time, especially if you're driving that car around, if you're just mm -hmm. parking in the garage and leave it there, it's going to increase in value, hopefully. But if you're actually using it and enjoying it like a boat or a car, over time, it's just going to lose a lot of its value. Whereas with jewelry, over time, it will, you know, especially if it's a diamond, because it's not going to get worn out. It's right, not gonna, right. You know, the mounting might get worn, but the, the core diamond is still going to stay exactly the same. And you can then turn around and get, you know, a good chunk of your money back and way better than any other luxury item that you might buy. 
I love talking about this subject. Yeah. Um, you know, when I'm talking to friends and clients, I, I tell people, you know, buy jewelry because you love it. It's beautiful. It makes you happy. Yeah. You know, not as an investment, but what I will tell you is a lot of times it turns out to be an investment. So, you know, you go buy 10, you know, spend 10 grand uh, at a furniture place. 10 years, 20 years later, what are you going to do with it? You, you throw it out on the sidewalk or yeah. and the it goes to the dump. Wear a beautiful diamond ring or, or a watch or something like that. Wear it for 10 or 20 years. Could be it could be worth more than what you paid for it. Might not, but, it, but at least you have something. Yeah. But, and if you keep it in good condition. Uh, conditions key, absolutely. But, yeah. but at least you have something. So yeah. I don't recommend it as an investment, but it could turn out that way. Oh, you know, you put the furniture out there and they charge you to take it away. I mean, yeah, you're losing yeah, money. Right. It's so <laughs> true. It's true. Yeah, so you'll always get some of your money back. So I think that's an important distinction. If you go into a jewelry store and someone says, you know, this is a good investment, it's not. If you want an investment, go buy a mutual fund. That's right. an Unless investment. you're the queen, her jewelry is going to be worth a lot more than what it originally was purchased for. All she has to do is touch it and it's worth more. <laughs> that's it what was, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, now I Shirley will. Temple's. Was it a blue diamond? A, yeah, what yellow. did that go for? No, no, high end jewelry. Was it, blue? it was blue. It was blue. Okay. There's a lot Thank of you. stuff out there. Like, <laughs> yes, ma'am. I, I, <laughs> I was gonna add one thing. You know, jewelry can be an investment if you're if you really know what to look for. Um, you know, if you're gonna sit down, you know, if someone ever comes to you and says, "I want to look at GIA diamonds. I want them as an investment." And you can really get into you know some diamonds at a at a very low price. It's possible, and a lot of the estate jewelry, the estate jewelry just keeps oh. going up. There oh. are certain instances that jewelry can be a good well, investment. That, that's like collecting art, and that's a whole different Absolutely. area. But like a commodity, you're talking, you're looking at diamonds like a commodity, like buying gold. You know, buy diamonds. You know, and kind and of. And if store they are them. gonna buy it as an investment, they need to be buying it from the right person. They can't go to just any jeweler. That's a good point. Get a well, diamond and expect that it's going to be an investment. They have to be getting a good price, and you're just not going to get that everywhere. No, no that's no, right. No, no. It's, 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 and there are people in this industry that are trying to commodi commoditize diamonds and commod <laughs> whatever the, you know the word. I'm, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, make a, they're trying to make it a commodity, and it's not working. <laughs> right. Anyway, we need to take a break for a couple of minutes, and then when we come back, we're going to jump into some more of your questions and uh, keep this conversation going. Sounds good. Sweet. All right. Hey guys, it's Howard. Tune into Gems of Knowledge every Sunday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 9.30 a.m. Pacific Time. Join our jewelry insiders, David Bellman and Justin Crawl, each week as they demystify the jewelry industry. Don't miss an episode. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today. All right. <laughs> anyway, welcome back. As you know, our job here is to demystify the jewelry industry. And we're always working hard at doing that. And our last segment was a good example. One of the segments that we'd like to do in the future is cruise ships. When people go on these cruise ships, they buy a lot of stuff and jewelry is one of them. And in my experience over the last 30 years, I've seen a lot of people come in with pieces that have been anything but fairly priced, I guess is the best way to put it. And I think it's important that uh, we exposed a little bit of this, and I know there are a lot of people out there with stories, and we'd like to have you submit any stories. So if you've been on a cruise and you bought a piece of jewelry and things didn't work out really well for you, send in your name. Should we use our Facebook? Is that the Howard? Is that the best way to do it? The Facebook Messenger. Yes. Yep. Okay. okay. So come, uh, just go on to our Gems of Knowledge fa Facebook page and just let us know. Send us your information. We'll we'll follow up with you, and we'd like to uh, talk about your experience. Maybe even have you on the show. Yeah. It's up to you. Wouldn't that be cool? Yes. Yeah. All right. We want a guest. Okay. You got it. Now, a lot of people asked in the last show about the Pawn Stars. Everybody thought that was pretty cool. And they said, you know, you got any pictures? And I said, well, you know, we tried to show the video, but we called the producers and they said, um, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't use any of the footage and anything, but unless you pay us or whatever and uh but <laughs> whatever. we did take a few behind the scenes photographs and we'd like to show those to you right now so what have we got oh boy here he is Look mr wonderful <laughs> yep and you can and, see my eyes which and, <laughs> one's the celebrity okay call him out it's the beard of knowledge beard of knowledge yeah he's really cool he's he a is, good guy he is a really nice guy and he's the guy that told me when we were there 
that he can't go anywhere in the world and not be recognized. I mentioned that in the last show because their show, Pawn Stars, is shown in over 140 different countries all around the world. Yeah. So he can't go anywhere and people don't stop him and want to talk to Everywhere him. Everywhere Justin goes, people stop him too. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they usually have a, like a warrant for his arrest. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Dave. <laughs> <Ba-dum-bum>. <laughs> All right, well, there he is, the infamous Chumley. Yeah. Yep, that was pre-arrest, I guess, back then. But <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> well, you know, but he's a good guy. He was a really cool, right? He was. Yeah, he was awesome. Yep. No, he was, and he's the one of the funny parts of the sh- of the show, and we really uh, liked meeting him. And of course, there's Mister Wonderful right there. And Pop. Yeah, oh, and Pop, and, and your dad. You know, the one you always talk about in the past tense. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> To me. He goes, I'm not dead. Why is Justin talking to me in the past tense? I'm still alive. <laughs> well, at least he was in that picture. I don't know if he still is now. But. No, I've talked to him <laughs> this morning. He's doing good. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll bet you did. <laughs> Dad, how are things in that little you know, room I'm keeping you in somewhere? You, know? you still having water down there? <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, my God. So, but uh, there you go. Proof positive that... Uh, we you were, were actually on the show. We were there, and yes. they actually liked us and didn't kick us out. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Going back to the cruise ship thing. Yeah. You want to talk about that a little bit? You know, I would, but we really, we've got another really cool question that came up, and we should work on that. But I, I do want people to call in because I, I just oh. know because I deal with, I've dealt with so many times. There's a lot of people out there. So, and, and we're going to make a whole show about that. So yeah. there's no, no doubt that we're going to have some fun with that. But yes. in the meantime, what, what was that other question? So it was related to colored stones, wasn't it? It was. So Kathy from Freedom, New Hampshire. Thank you, Kathy, for your question. We are going to answer that for you. Her question was, are there any gems that are no heat treated to create its color? It's a good question. Yeah. Love uh, Freedom, New Hampshire. Really? <laughs> yeah, they have an awesome campground up there. <laughs> <laughs> Which okay, campground? Well, well, Danforth. Oh. oh, okay. So yeah. you really know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. All right, I didn't yeah. know if you were just making this up. Okay. No. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm, he I'm, knows his campgrounds. Yeah, yeah. evidently. I have a <laughs> campground expert now. All right. <laughs> Let's answer the lice lady's question. What? She's talking about heat treated. Yes. Do, do they what, do they change color of all? Are all stones heat treated? Is that kind of what she's asking? Yes, pretty much. Are, do any are there any com- gems that are no heat treated to oh. create its color? Oh, that's a good question. The answer is uh, yes. Some gems, many are heated. Many uh, there are many that are not as well. Well, let's uh, let's let's start right from the beginning. So, what is it? What is heat treated? mean and okay. why do they do it so let's just go right there sure sure so the a lot of gemstones like uh, tanzanite is a is a good one yep uh, most of them come out of the earth like a light brown very unattractive yep there are a few occasions that they come out that that nice uh purple mm-hmm. even those when they come out purple what they do is they take the brown ones and the ones that aren't so purple and they heat them i don't remember the exact temperature but they they heat them up it's yep probably close to melting yep and uh it changes the color it changes the structure of the stone just a little bit the color comes uh in now there's two types of heating there's that process where it's strictly heat yep and then there's another process that they do uh, and this goes back to sometimes deception right is diffusion so okay. this is when they heat it like sapphires that are diffused treated uh they heat them up almost to melting point and then they add the color in with a chemical they infuse it into the and stone they infuse it into the stone and i'll never forget when i first started yeah um i was at a jewelry store trying to buy some jewelry from them and um they came in with a big sapphire yeah and he was just about to buy it from this other guy and he goes you just graduated gia what is this thing mm-hmm. i looked at it i put it so what you do is you immerse these sapphires in water in like a beaker or any glass or anything. Yeah. You put a paper towel underneath, shine the light up through the uh, bottom of the glass, yep. and the stone lit up like a checkerboard. All the color was concentrated along the facet junctions. Yep. So it, I'll never forget that story. I saved the guy thousands of dollars the guy was just about to buy it yeah um so now it was worth not, you know, no, not, not, now yeah. 
let's Absolutely be clear. Absolutely worthless. Uh, well, no, <laughs> but no, no. Let's let's be clear. It was a natural stone. Natural so sapphire. So it's a natural blue sapphire. Could have yeah. been white. Could have been any well, color. Well, that's true. And then they just completely infused a another chemical or another process or another color mm-hmm. right into the stone to change its color. Not not like with heating where they just kind of change it um, chemically or not chemically, but uh, structurally. Structurally. A yeah, got it. But they're but they're doing. And then we should also talk about irradiation by oh, using radiation as as a form of heat, heat treating. It is. Yeah, it's a form of heat. But it also, I mean, there are. What, do you remember when there were stones that were so irradiated that they were actually had so much radiation on them that they were dangerous and they and they, they had to call them back. They would register on a Geiger counter. Yeah, go, you know the thing would just take off. Yeah, I mean you, you would actually get radiation poisoning from getting too close to these stones because they over. They overdid it. They, they left them in there too long. Yeah, but just to um, you know, go over what that is, um, right. irradiation is essentially when the stone is bombarded with nuclear radiation, almost in like a, the, the process is very complicated, but they actually use nuclear radiation to bombard these stones to enhance their color. That's another one they do with, uh, they do that with diamonds a lot. Yep. So you'll see those blues and those vivid colors in diamonds. Yeah, the fancy Mo- colors. Fancy colors. Most of them are irradiated. Yep. So when you see a diamond out there, that's, for example, fancy yellow is a good example, right? You see a lot of that's probably one of the most popular colors for irradiation. And it is very, very difficult to differentiate those that have been irradiated and those that are natural color because it's, it's microscopic. And the best thing for us to do, I think for the most part, we send everything off to GIA to confirm it, don't we? Absolutely. Yeah, we, we really don't even have, I mean, we do have some equipment here and we can kind of tell, but we can't be 100%. So you gotta really send it out to a lab where they have tons of equipment and the expertise to really do a solid job and say, hey, 100%, this has been irradiated. Because some of it, it could be half natural yellow and then some irradiation. You know, it doesn't have to be completely irradiated. It could be just enough to take it from yellow to fancy yellow or vivid to a different level that document is is worth its weight in gold that gia document you know especially when you're buying stuff like this but you know on a scale of you know severity of of heating you have you know i would say irradiated and then diffused and then your normal heat process and then of course you have just natural so that was the original question do they have stones that come out of the earth just the way you see them in a jewelry store, yes, and they're very rare. So if it's heat treated, is it still considered a natural stone or would it be considered um, lab created? Well, that's a good question. I'm not sure uh, if I've ever heard of a synthetic then coming out of the lab and then on top of it being heat treated, but just because a natural gemstone is heat treated doesn't mean it's synthetic it's anymore it's still, still natural natural but uh have you ever heard of a synthetic then being heat treated no and and so and i guess really the question was really more of you know does it become synthetic no no synthetic is just stones that are created in the lab, in a lab. period and you're right and then after that could they then be heat treated afterwards yeah sure why not if they come out and they're off color and they want to take a shot i mean they got nothing into it they're just growing right. them in a lab so they might as well just play around with them because it doesn't matter but Obviously, a, a stone that's not treated is much more valuable than one that comes out of the ground. That natural color, like a, like some of the Burma rubies that we've seen. Yes, that you know that they're very hard to come by now. But you know, back in the day, you would see some rubies with intense color, right? Just crystal red, perfect. Going back to the original question, do you yeah. have some examples of some gemstones that come out of Mother Nature without heat treatment on a regular basis, like? Some of the, uh, I don't know, peridot, quartz, citrine? Yeah, you know, amethyst. I don't think they, I mean, they, they started to treat it, you know, just to, for volume. But, I mean, there's tons of it comes out beautiful. You know, purple tourmaline. I don't know anybody heat treating tourmaline. Right. But I could be wrong. I don't know. So but can I've never you seen tell it. if it's heat treated? Or is that something that you would have to send to a lab to figure out? So, uh, you know, when I used to work at GIA, that was half of the course was detecting synthetics and treatments and it can be tough so oh, now yeah. you know if a, say a stone walked in you know five carat beautiful ruby you know i'm gonna put it under the scope i'm gonna look at it i can probably tell you 99 percent that whether it's heat treated or not but there's that you know when you're talking tens of thousands of dollars you yep. send it to gia a week two weeks you'll have it back and you'll know exactly. then you can make the the best that's educated 
decision you can. Absolutely. And and we're going to just close this out. But, you know, just it's also important for people to realize that even for us, it's, it's difficult because we a lot of times we can't take the gems out of the mountings. And that's a, a big part of the process of going through and identifying a lot of these stones as either being synthetic or as being real. And then are they treated? A lot of these tests have to be done outside of the out of the mountains. So don't expect to walk in and have say to somebody, is it real or not? And they're going to give you 100 percent. They say 100 percent sure one way or the other. And, and you're not convinced the best way to do it is to take the stone out of the mountain, take it to a real gemologist. And ultimately, if you're really close to like you said, you look at it, and say, yeah, this looks really good. You ship it off and have GIA take a look at it. Right. I mean, that's the best All way right. to go and get it certified. Yeah. For, for us in the mountains, very tough. Like you said, yeah, GIA. Diamonds need to be out of the mounting. Oh, everything. Yeah. Color does not. Yep. Color what? can stay in the mounting for GIA. I really. Yeah. They're that good, huh? I don't know if that's been always, but right now, um, absolutely can be mounted. There you go. Um, wow. Some new. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean they're. I mean they're, they're state of the art. They've done everything. They know exactly they know what, they're, what doing. they're doing. And obviously, they have a they have foolproof tests now. They can do it there. That's that's Go, impressive. Gold standard, man. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so Kathy, I hope that five minute long <laughs> conversation answered your question. You know, yeah, and, and we just kind of touched on everything really. Uh, there's there's so much more to it, but you know, we'll get in more depth as we get more questions. You know, specifically to what you're doing. You know, what your questions are. So please bring. You know, send them in to us. We really want them. We want to answer your questions. All right, we're going to take another short break, and we'll be right back with some slap down, smack down of celebrities. <laughs> hey, people, it's Howard again. Tune into Gems of Knowledge every Sunday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 9.30 a.m. Pacific Time. Hey, we want your input. What Julia questions do you have? Be part of future episodes. Post your questions on our YouTube channel today and become an official Gems of Knowledge contributor. All right, we're back, and it's now time for one of my favorite segments, Celebrity Jewelry Smackdown. Smack that's right. Smackdown. Smack em down. Smack yep. em down, that's new. All yeah. right. <laughs> but before we begin, I'm always picking the pictures and um, getting it all together. We want your pictures and what um, celebrities you want us to smack down. So if oh, you nice. want to send those to our Facebook as well, we'd be happy to put them on the next show and smack them down. Yeah. Or we might smack <laughs> them up. We, who knows? They might, we might actually like it. Who knows? Let's oh, see. my God. <laughs> All right. So we haven't seen these. Well, only Rachel has seen these. So I've we're seen gonna, them. Yeah. So that's Sarah wow. Hyland from Modern Family. I picked this because I love that ring. Different, yeah. I love sapphires. So if I say I hate it, then obviously oh, then. <laughs> it's just different. I love seeing different jewelry. I now. like big rings like that. I come, I'm kind of digging the dress, man. Is that all like supposed to be like gemstones and stuff? In there? I think this that's... is jewelry smackdown, <laughs> Dave. Not, <laughs> but that's fashion. a jewelry not dress. Fashion. That's a jewelry dress smackdown. No, I like it. I think that's cool. Anyway, what about the ring? The ring. <sighs> it looks like butterfly to me. I'm sorry. It's not. I, I don't, not for I, you. No, I mean, I love the sapphires. They look like Ceylons. I love the idea. But, I mean, it's just basically, it's just six oval stones surrounded with, you know, diamonds around. I mean, that's, you know, it's been done a thousand times. It looks like a giant butterfly. I'm sorry. <laughs> how, about the, uh, how about the three stone? I oh, can't that really thing? see it. It looks, and an, it's not, doesn't look antique, actually. It looks like a modern yeah, it's cool, antique. Nothing's reproduction. Reproduction, yeah. Yeah. Nah. Nope, sorry for me. But Next. Oh Margot Robbie, she's wearing a Van Cleef zipper type necklace. That's a zipper? I'm obsessed with it. We've seen this style uh, before. This is coming, yeah. becoming popular. I really, really love that. Is it like a real zipper? I can't see. Yes, there at the is an actual. There. So I don't know if the zipper actually moves up and down, but there is a zipper right above the um the like tassel. Where am I like living under a rock? Why am I not seeing any of this stuff? Does anyone have um, a connection with an eye doctor? <laughs> no, just a <laughs> zipper. Ne I mean, I see thousands of necklaces. I've never seen a z is this. Is this is something that's been around for a while? Um, I, I we've just seen it recently, um, but, you know. But uh, I'm not sure how long it's been around. I think it's cool. Um, I like it against black. Yep. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It adds a pop mm. of color to her black, and I like it with the red lipstick too. I know this is jewelry smackdown, but. Yeah, I think I might have picked a different shade, but that's okay. 
<laughs> All right. That's that's right. So, 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 there. so very, yeah, thank you. Yes. No, that was uh, very interesting. I'll give All right. it that. Emeralds. Oh, boy. That's beautiful. That's All right. Those gorgeous. stones. Wow. Can you imagine? It's very, like, wow. a, it's a chunky necklace. Oh, that's got to be worth a few million dollars. And I feel like she's just too skinny for it. Not a big fan of cabochons no. like that. No. But look yeah. at the color, man. They're just so intense. And she should not. I'm sorry, but I don't like the earrings. Agreed. I think the the necklace is pretty, but the both of them put together is just she way overdid it, and it kind of ruined it. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think those are the matching earrings that go with that necklace? I hope not. Because if they are, they screwed that they up. They screwed up bad if that is. Big yeah. time. Because I don't think they are because they're... Uh, is there black stones in the earrings? No, if you look to the right uh, in the corner, you can see the green. The, they're green cabochons. They just, you know, you can see that they are those. They, I think clearly they are matching earrings, but they don't match. They, they don't, don't even. And it's way too much. I feel like when you wear big earrings like that, you need to have your hair up. You know what they should have done? They should have just done simple drops. Take take one of those one of those strands. So you get the five pieces coming down and then make an yes. earring just exactly like that. Yes. Right. I and agree. that would have been that would have been the way to go. Nice and job, Dave. Just for everyone. Van at... Cleef, is this who said this was? No, I don't know who this one is. All right, we'll find out who it is. Tell them that they really need to bring me in, and, and I will send them an email. Thank you. You're welcome. J just to uh, well. No, go back. Justin needs to say something. Oh, okay, Howard. <laughs> what? What? That's so important. Um, just so everyone knows, you know, we were talking at home. We were talking about cabochons. Maybe some people don't know what cabochons are. Hmm. Good point. So cabochons are the ones on the bottom and in the earrings. They're gemstones that, in my opinion, usually didn't qualify to be faceted. And uh, I know from, from my end, when I obtain a colored stone that's a cabochon, I go to try to um, you know, either sell it or liquidate it to the people in my circle. And right. I always get grief. You know, oh, it's a cabochon. It's a cabochon. And, yeah, well, you don't see it very often in jewelry in general. And you're right. They, they, if, I'm sure if they could have recut those into big, giant, faceted, you know, faceted stone. stones, like they the wouldn't be hanging Like the one that Lady right Gaga now. wore, and it was like a pear-shaped faceted mm -hmm. emerald, that big necklace. Oh, yes. We showed it on, yep. like, I think it was the second Rich show. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. that was on there, I think that would be a different story. Yep. Yeah. All right. So who was... Next. who's Who's the... Uh, Scarlett Johansson, oh, that's she uh, wow. is wearing a Bulgari necklace. You like it? Bulgari. Okay. I don't know. I feel like the colors together just looks too childish. It reminds me of springtime. I, th I think it's cool. I don't know what those... Uh, is, Howard, can you zoom in on that one? Are those little cabochons or are those little faceted stones? Yeah, that's a good question. All right, poor Howard. Now we put him right <laughs> on the spot here. But no, no, it's okay. No, but I, what we can do is say that um, those colors are in. So I mean, you know, that's anything. That's well, I like each color separately. Yeah. I don't know if I like them all together like that. Oh, there we go. Anything Bulgari, just so you know, you know, it's, it holds its value. Unbelievable. I mean, on a on an estate level, once you right. buy a Perion. They right. just keep going up in value. Now I don't know if you, you know, or if you bought this new, you're not going to make money with it right away. But yep. this stuff on a on a pre-owned market, hmm. it's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, branding again is everything. You know, same thing with Tiffany's and uh, yeah. a few of the others. Okay. Um, what do we do? We have another one coming up. Yes, we do. Okay. I think if I saw that one off of her, though, I would like it. Not this one. Oh, oh, boy, here comes a not slap. My, uh, slap down. Love preference. her hair. <laughs> do you? I do. Being sarcastic. <laughs> no, I love it. You, you like serious. that? I'm serious. I love it. It looks like someone just kind of, you know, never mind. Okay. Bird's nest? Yeah. Yeah. What, what they used to call that? A beehive? Yeah. yeah. Beehive, Something yeah. Like that. Okay. But the See? necklace. All right. Turquoise. Goes around, comes around. There's that amethyst. That went in, in, is that blackened? It's probably you know, onyx. Oxidized it's, silver. It, oh. Oh, the, it looks like it doesn't look like. Yes, that's not a metal. No. Yeah, so it's black. It's probably. No. It's probably black rope. I can't tell what it is, but that it's not metal. Okay. Look you, at it. You know this? Look at it. Well, what's holding the stones? 
No, I think she's talking about the whole necklace piece, right? The 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 underlying. The necklace itself does not look like silver. There looks like there's silver pieces. Oh, right, but but the majority of it is metal, right? Well, the necklace. Yeah. Duh. Well, you go the whole thing's not metal. <laughs> oh, I said whole thing. <laughs> really? Yeah, the entire none really, of it's Howard, metal. Really, Howard? Did I say whole thing? It's cord. Is a is a black cord that's put, holding it on there, like for the necklace part, right? And those are just pieces that are put on there. That's all it is. Rachel's a cord. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Nicole oh. Kidman, oh. she's wearing Those aren't real, chandelier are earrings by Fred Layton, so I'm going to go with, yes, they're real. Fred Layton, yeah, another big name. Oh, come on. I'm sorry, I love them. I don't know if you do. I uh, uh, no. freaking love those. They look, I mean, that looks like one freaking giant piece of costume jewelry. She pulls them off. She has the jawline for them and the collarbones. No. I will say... They're just draping. They're, they're all over nope. her. They just... David, enough. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. I think she should have put her hair in a bun, not a ponytail, and she should have wear something strapless. And then I would go crazy over them. But I still love them. And Come on, Justin. Let's go. Justin. Say it. I mean, love the manufacturer. <laughs> Beautiful. Not everybody gets it right, huh? <laughs> Beautiful... Uh, you know, stuff coming from well, Fred Layton. Even those other necklaces, even though they were over the top, you could see somebody actually, a, a real person wearing those. Who would wear these? I would. You would? Yes. Okay. To wear. T to well, work. <laughs> you would wear them to work? <laughs> I'd wear them on Gems of Knowledge. There you go. All right. Well, Dave. Yeah, no, you. <laughs> you can do it. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm stepping back from this one. I don't like them anyway, so there you go. All right, uh, Jessica Biel is wearing another Bulgari snake necklace. And it looks uh, like there's emeralds on it. That's cool. That's really cool. cool. That's I, a lot of work. I want to know. I was trying to find pictures of the back of it. Cause I'm, there must be a clasp, right? Or it's flexible. Or do you think it's flexible? Hmm. It'd be pretty neat if it was flexible. I'd like and to you could like kind of warp it however you want it. Wouldn't that be cool if you could? I wouldn't be surprised. Because look how tight it is around her neck. Yeah. Yeah. Very I think that's so cool, but it does not. But I don't see the bottom of her dress, but it does not go with the top of it. It's like she's wearing a bird. <laughs> anything what to happened do with, to? Uh, we can't comment on the dresses on the first picture. <laughs> Hello, I'll tell you what, anything to do with oh. animals. Yeah, it's very quick seller. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, and like Cartier has the um, is it a cougar or a panther? Panther. Yeah. Yep. Anything to do with animals, like one of the first when we list stuff on eBay, first, first thing that cats, goes, cats are a big thing. Put out a cat pin yep. or a cat <laughs> ring, gone. gone <laughs> I mean, as soon as you list it. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you credit. You found a really nice one. This is very cool. I like it. I think it's a, just a ton. I of hate work. snakes. Well, personally, but you can wait. Live with no, that one. it doesn't. It, do you see? Our, it looks like it's flexible. Do you see how it has the? Um, yeah. No, I, I I have seen pieces like this before, and they are they are flexible. They Dude, have a crazy fish, amount of labor. That little fish yeah, pendant yeah. that you're like scrapping. Right. It looks like that. Yep, that's what it is. I'm telling you, I think it is flexible. Oh wow! All right, Look Sophia. She's wearing Lorraine Schwartz. Now those are gemstones, Earrings. faceted properly, so you can really see the light coming back at you much better so, than cabochon. It's weird because in my the opinion. necklace that Scarlett Johansson was wearing that I didn't like because I didn't like the colors together were these three colors and I love these earrings so well, maybe it was just the piece that I didn't like but these I love well I, I can tell you from experience that trying to design a piece of jewelry with three different colored these three these are, they're all precious stones right so you, the only the diamond ruby you get the whole thing right, right. diamond yeah. ruby sapphire emerald. the big four <laughs> yeah you got the all of them right in one piece I've never seen it done nicely like that before I'll give her credit I that she that. took those colors <clears throat> and incorporated them into one piece and it doesn't look like it's junk yeah so, you know, with all the colored stone uh, talk today, we you know maybe another episode we could talk about the different uh, varieties and origins and which ones oh, are more valuable than others. And, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's gonna be a fun episode. Yes. Yeah. No, there's cashmere sapphires, Colombian emeralds, Burmese rubies. Sure. All the all that stuff. No, nope, there's no question about it. And so so much for the smacking down. I think we did a pretty good job this time. And yeah. I think you did a, got some great 
great shots. Yes. So thank you. But definitely send your pictures in that you want us to smack down. Yeah, that would as be a lot of fun. As long as they're celebrities and not like someone you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, again, we'll take another short break. We'll be back and we'll be wrapping up the segments. Thanks. Guess who? Howard again. If you enjoyed our show, we'd really appreciate your support. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share us with your friends. And remember to join us next Sunday for more Gems of Knowledge. Thanks again for joining us. We had a great time, and we hope you did too. Remember to tune in next week for an all-new episode. Our shows air each Sunday at 12.30, and they will always be available to watch anytime on YouTube. So please, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And share us with your friends. And we'll see you next week. Thanks.